This is the story of Coach Lincoln Tiger Phillips and the Howard University Bison soccer team taking a stand against the National Collegiate Athletic Association, or NCAA. By the end of the 1960s, the civil rights movement in America was forcing social change in towns, cities, and college campuses across the country. But at times, things were raging out of control, especially following the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. People were demanding equal rights and they were desperately looking for signs of social progress. It was in this time when the Howard Bisons began their rise to greatness. In 1971, Coach Lincoln Phillips, an internationally acclaimed goalkeeper from Trinidad and Tobago, led Howard University, a historically black university, or HBCU, to win the NCAA National Soccer Championship, becoming the first HBCU to win the national championship in any sport. Who we represented. I know that Black America was extremely proud of the moment. Following their historic rise to the championship, several coaches from other teams complained to the NCAA. As a result, they searched the rule books to find a way to strip Howard of their title and penalize the team for allegedly using ineligible if players. If you look deep enough, the NCAA rules, especially at that time, were so vague, mm. you're going to find something. I see. And they claimed two players who hadn't taken the SAT, which was not required by Howard, and two others who played amateur soccer for their countries were ineligible. The insignificance, the absolute insignificance of the so-called infraction, it was biased, it was prejudiced, we were discriminated against. The landmark national championship, the first for any historically black college, was gone. This experience set the stage for Coach Lincoln Phillips to take a stand for what was right, fight to change the system, and win back the championship that was taken from them. The team adopted the famous quote by American poet William Cullen Bryant that was also a favorite of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Truth crushed the earth will rise again. Truth crushed the earth shall rise again. Truth crushed the earth shall rise again. Yeah. Truth crushed to earth shall rise again. Uh, we, we rallied behind that and we, uh, you know, we we won every single game, not a That's tie, right. not a loss, and that is still, is still a record. That record. But before Coach Phillips and the Bisons could rise, they had to face several challenges. Coach Phillips had to take a stand against the NCAA and challenge them about the decision to strip the Bisons of the championship. And the biggest challenge of all was that the team actually had to make it back to the NCAA tournament and win it all. Coach Phillips described how he overcame these challenges. And that. I believe was one of my biggest achievement, coaching achievement, is in trying to get the players to stop thinking about racism and hating and discrimination. I asked Coach Phillips how the community reacted when their title was stripped. With horror. They were equally as hurt for us and they, they just wanted to see um, uh, retribution occur. And also, what other coaches thought? Um, I met a lot of white coaches. Harry Keel, in particular, he coached at um, St. Louis University. And when they took over the championship from us, they wanted to give it to St. Louis. And he said, no thanks. We win championships on the field. I also had a chance to speak with Pat Leahy, a midfielder who played for St. Louis University in the 1971 championship game, who went on to play in the NFL as a place kicker for the New York Jets. To me, it was one of the best soccer games I ever participated in. Coach Keo, rightfully so, did not take the title because we didn't do it while playing. We didn't win it. So, Coach Phillips worked over the next couple years to prepare the team to rise again. However, he also had to challenge the system that worked against the team and denied them of the championship. Even their fiercest competitors, the St. Louis Billikens, did not feel that Howard's alleged infractions mattered. We didn't care. I guess they had a couple of older guys. They had a couple of guys who maybe had played pro somewhere is what I had heard. I don't know. All we cared about was going out on the field and playing against good teams. Even though they felt they were being discriminated against, Howard tried to win the championship again in 1972. The NCAA threatened Howard with a suspension, so Coach Phillips did not play their best players to avoid any questions. They still made it to the championship, where they lost to St. Louis University. I forget the score, but we beat them in the tournament 
the next year. After that loss, Coach Phillips took a stand against the NCAA at their annual conference and made a statement calling their treatment of Howard University racism. We played against this entire wretched system of this society. Anytime they decide to get together to deprive any people of uh, what is due to them, I would say that the NCAA is guilty of practicing racism. The NCAA is guilty of practicing racism. Coach Phillips told me about that moment. Wow, that was a scary moment. <laughs> While I was walking up to the podium, I just knew that I was going to congratulate the coach and, and say all these nice things. And when I got up there and started to talk, it just came up. I guess I was so hurt for my players, for me and my players, that I had to say what I felt. My president, James Cheek, was very, very pleased that I took that stuff. He said, that's what a Howard person, that's what a Howard man was doing. Stand. Howard challenged the NCAA in court, and the rules were changed the next year. Coach Phillips also worked to overcome the fact that his amazing players would not have the opportunity to play for the championship because of a suspension from the tournament in 1973. That was the hardest year I've ever coached in my life because the motivation of each, for each player was going to the NCAA championship. And Coach Phillips also focused on changing the way that the players thought about their mission. He said, whenever you go out to the soccer field, you're not just playing a game of soccer, you're representing your race, you're representing your country, you're representing the game of soccer, you're rep representing Howard University. You are ambassadors, and ambassadors must be at their best, not often, but always. Instead of giving up, Howard came back in 1974 to attempt to regain the national championship. Midfielder Ian Baines said, Had we lost the tournament, it would have affected the rest of our lives. We had to put something right that we felt was wrong. They reached the finals and once again faced their rivals, the St. Louis University Billikens. But now, it looks like the team was going to lose the game and possibly all hope of winning back their title. And Coach Phillips explained the mood during the game. We were just out of it. We fouled so many times. The guys, the timing was off. Everything was off. And we're lucky to have gone into the dressing room once uh, zero. St. Louis looking more aggressive. Kicks a shot. Go St. Louis. I asked him what he did or said to the team during halftime. So I looked at Mario McLean. He had not played. And he was a fullback. And I asked us, Mario, do you want to play the halfback for me? He said, yes, coach. So I just knew that he had the right mentality. And me asking him at this crucial time, it was not a good decision, and the game changed. So, you know, it wasn't a game speech as such. It was, it was just a significant change, not a popular one, but a, a change that I thought had to so many challenge. The rest of the story is history. The Bison scored a tying goal and the game wound up going into four overtime periods before Howard finally scored and won the championship. We got it. We got it back. We took it. And that redemption was a direct result of the stand that Coach Lincoln Phillips took in not only facing the NCAA, but also daring to take his team back and win the championship. Another question I had was about the impact of Howard University soccer championships on the way the predominantly white colleges viewed black soccer players. When we won in 1971, I remember playing Clemson. They had one black player on the team. Two years later, Clemson came up to play us. They had one white player. It was a complete reverse. The team was all black. And so more teams were starting to go to the Caribbean and Africa. There is very little NCAA diversity data available from the 1970s and 1980s about the number of black players who play on college soccer teams. However, the NCAA diversity research database shows significant increases in non-white soccer players at the predominantly white universities through the 1990s until today, rising from 27% to 46%. Today at, at SLU, they go out now, they recruit from all over the world. By winning the 1974 NCAA championship, Coach Lincoln Phillips and the Howard University soccer team took a stand by facing the racist injustice against them, overcoming it to win the championship and opening the door for black soccer players to gain more access to soccer programs in colleges and universities.